This is a video about Bitwig Studio 3 and why I think that it's a very appealing DAW for the modular artist. There's two things in particular that I think set Bitwig apart um, in terms of software that is not just valuable for but fits in the philosophy and mindset of the modular artist. And those two things are modulators and the grid. In this video I'm going to talk about modulators and in the part two I will talk about the grid. So as with a lot of my videos, this, this one isn't necessarily going to be a complete tutorial of everything possible that you can know about Bitwig. There's already many great videos out there. What I want to hone in on is what about this software makes it fit the mindset of the modular artist? And secondly, how it's very easy to integrate the hardware URL rack directly into the software. It's actually very seamless. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so really quickly, um, what the screen that we're looking at here is this is the arranger view and this this column here will list all the tracks you can see I have one track up right now it's called polysynth and when a track is selected down here in this tray is where all of the devices occur and you can think of each of these devices as a little bit like uh, you're stacking a sequence of modules together they behave in a little bit of that way so for example, this, this device here, you can see I have Polysynth up. This is a virtual synthesizer. But if we wanted to add reverb on, uh, in this case, this device that I've added here is a third-party VSD. This is EOS2 by Audio Damage. And basically what will happen is the signal will flow through this device and it'll flow into this device. So already you're seeing that this is, this is kind of following a, a signal path thought. But what Bigwig has done, um, because other DAWs have done similar things here, but what Big, Bitwig has done is on each of the d these devices, you can see here, there's this thing. This is called the skeleton key. And I can click it on any device in this tray, and it will bring out, it'll expose this area here with the plus signs, and this is where I can add a modulator. So let me put together a simple clip here, and I will show you what these things do. So I'm going to add a basic clip up top here. And the only thing that we're going to put in here is I'll put one note, which is C3. All right. So to make that a little bit more exciting, I'm going to drop an arpeggiator in front of it. Let's decrease the gate length. Now here's where the modulators come in. So over here we have our synth, and we can mess around with parameters. But I can click the skeleton key here, and I can add a modulator. Now, Bitwig comes with 30-some out of the box, and there's many interesting ones here. And as you look through this list, you'll see that many of these are things that, uh, these are modulation styles that you would normally be able to use in a hardware modular synthesizer. So for example here, if I picked this four stage, this one's pretty neat. This allows different shapes to be drawn. We can set a curve. So now we've got this shape. You can see it's firing each time the note fires. Let's make this a little faster. Now what we can do is we can use the skeleton key on this modulator to change some parameter over here on our device. Yeah, so I mean that works like you would expect. You can add LFOs on that work much the same way. Now what's interesting too is that we can use a modulator to modulate a modulator. So in this case we have this four stage and on this four stage I could actually change the amount of modulation that's being applied here. So we could bring this down to nothing and then say our four stage is going to affect how much modulation is happening. Modulate the speed a little. So this is neat, and in my opinion, this allows a workflow 
that is really similar to how uh, a Eurorack artist might think of things. So for example, here's a 16-step sequencer. We could do the same thing where we could say, um, we'll bring in the sub and the noise based on what the value is here. Maybe that's not the most exciting thing, but what I find really interesting about this is not only can you modulate uh, sound making devices, you could modulate third party VSTs. So in this case, uh, what could we change? Let's say the, maybe the mix amount. So same thing, I'm going to modulate the mix here. This is a little low, let's bring this up. Not only can we do that, but any of these devices that affect the notes, we can modulate them as well. So you can see here, the arpeggio does a bunch of different shapes. And even if I change this, we're not actually getting different pitches anywhere. And the reason why is that we're only feeding in one note. Well, we don't have to go draw a bunch of MIDI data. We can just apply a device to change that. So here's the multi-note device. And that is basically saying, let the original pitch through, add 12 semitones, add five semitones, add four semitones. Now, these will give us uh, an octave and a fifth. And you know where this is going, right? We can modulate that. So we can modulate, uh, instead of letting the original pitch through, we'll maybe go up an octave. Now to make sure that we are, we are in key, we can just run it through a, um, this would be a quantizer in your rack. This pattern chain here, you can modulate that. I'll set this to maybe every quarter now. So what I think is interesting here is we've taken a MIDI clip that literally has one, one piece of data in it, and we've used devices and modulation to make an interesting sequence. But that's not all. Bitwig also allows us to use hardware control voltage as a modulator. So what should we modulate now? How about let's replace this multi-note LFO with, uh, let's replace it with what Tides is doing over here. So right now you can see I've got, I've got Tides running in continual mode here. And you can see from these bicolor LEDs the, what the state of the output of that control voltage is. Now I have two modules that are making this possible. The first is the Expert Sleepers ES3. This allows me to take audio or control voltages from the software and bring them here into the hardware. The second is this one. This is the ES6. This allows me to take control voltages or audio from the Euro rack and pass it back into the software. So in this case, I'm just gonna patch this one here and I'll put it here in port number six. Let me delete that modulator. And you can see that one of the modulators we have is hardware in. So I will go ahead and set that to ES6. And you can see here that we are getting the signal that's coming out of tides here. If I speed it up, 
you can see that that's reflecting here in the software. So we can do the same thing where I say bind that control voltage. Now you can see that we're not just modulating this, modulating it with hardware control voltage. Let's do that somewhere else too. So that's cool, right? You can basically take any control voltage that you have here and bring it in. We can also go the other direction. So there's a CV out device. I'll go ahead and set that to port 7. You can see here as I'm moving the knob in the software that that LED port is changing. You can look at that on the oscilloscope here. You can see it's it's doing what I described. So what's cool is that we can map any of the Bitwig modulators. So now well, let's just pick a um, just pick an ADSR. So you can see we're getting we're getting that signal. This is described in software, but we're getting it here in hardware. We could use that to modulate something. So now we're now we're using a hardware LFO to modulate a software device, but we're also modulating the hardware device from a software envelope. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that's really cool. In the next video, we'll take a look at the grid and we'll do some similar tricks with it.